Welcome to the first annual Big Game Talk MMA Award Show for this year, 2020. I'm Brad, here with my co-host Chris to lead you through the night. Now, 2020 would have been a pretty forgettable year. I mean, what happened if it wasn't for all this great MMA action we had? Which is why we felt it was fitting that we end the year with our inaugural MMA Award Show. Television ratings for award shows have never been lower, but we're doing one anyways. Hell, we even have a red carpet. That's a wine stain, Chris. And Scarlett Johansson looked great standing on it. The MMA world has brought us many ups and downs throughout the year, and through it all, when sports were faltering or not bringing us any noteworthy news, MMA world kept us going. It, it became our most talked about topic on our podcast, Big Game Talk, and provide us some of the best moments of the year. Now, we would like to celebrate this year's achievements in the MMA world with you, our viewers, starting with our first award, Best Submission of the Year. The nominees for this award are Jack Hermanson, UFC Fight Night, July 18th versus Kelvin Gastelum. Khabib Nurmagomedov with the historic submission over Justin Gaethje at UFC 254. And Davison Figueredo with his title winning submission are you also at UFC Fight Night July 18th versus Joseph Benavides? We're blessed to have UFC 2020 Flyweight Title Challenger Alex Perez here with us to announce the winner. The winner of the best submission in 2020 is Khabib at UFC 254 over Justin Gaethje. Uh, just shows why he's so dominant, why he's the best pound for pound fighter right now. So, yeah, congrats, Khabib. Thanks, Alex, for presenting that award and congratulations to Khabib. I mean, this is one of the highest honors he's ever achieved in his career, and it couldn't go to somebody more deserving. Now, next, we got a very exciting award, a fun award. It's the best knockout of the year. This one was tough to pick nominees. But we have our nominees for it. First off, Joaquin Buckley versus Impa Kasagani at UFC Fight Island 5 with that beautiful spinning back kick. Then we have Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone at UFC 246, a little bit of that shoulder action, and then Cody Garbrandt versus Rafael Sunsau with a beautiful knockout at UFC 250. And we have friend of the program, Brock, here to announce the winner. Now, if you haven't seen these knockouts, do not worry. We have some dramatic recreations of those knockouts. Now, we can't show you the real highlights because Dana White will just sue our asses out of oblivion, but we got something almost as good me showing you how exactly the knockouts went down. Roll the tape. Now, our first knockout comes from Joaquin Buckley going up against Impa Kasagani. All right, so this these guys are fighting. This is early in the fight. They're going back and forth. They're going back and forth. Joaquin Buckley throws a kick. Impa, oh, I, I gotta, I should have warmed up for this. He grabs his leg. This is a picture, picture, Kasagani driving his leg, and then Joaquin Buck, who's like, what are you doing to hold my leg? And then he spins, boom, right in the face, guy gets knocked out. Now, our next knockout is coming from Conor McGregor, uh, unleashing the hurt onto Cowboy Cerrone. So this goes a little something like this. Conor comes in, he, he goes in, misses a punch, but then, boom, the knee, and then gets the clinch. And then he's got, he's got Cerrone in the clinch, and he's like, oh, how's my shoulder taste? How's the shoulder taste? And he's just, and and Cerrone's just eating, eating this 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 shoulder. It's crazy move. And then and then you got McGregor coming, in and then oh, you like the shoulder? How about the knee? And then boom, and then he hits him with the knee. And Cowboy's like, woo, you know, he's wobbling. You can see him wobbling right there. And then finally to finish off, Conor McGregor hits him with the just wow leg kick. So this it was such a great leg kick. It, when I recreate it, it doesn't even fit on the green screen. Look at that, it's going off of it. Crazy knockout for Conor McGregor. All right, and the last nominee. We got Cody Garbrandt versus Rafael Asuncao. Okay, so they, these guys are going to war out here. It's the second round, UFC 250. They're, these guys are duking it out, and they're going, and they're going, and then 10 seconds left, you think, oh, the round's over. I'm going to go up, get, get a bathroom break, you know, all those things. Round's done. Not much can happen in 10 seconds. Wrong. All right, so this guy's... The Garbrandt's back is to the cage. He's backed up. A sun cow comes in with a big right. Garbrandt just nope, and he gets up. Bah! Just goes like bah! one time, just one time. I'm doing it multiple times. This is instant replay I'm doing right now. But he takes one time, just bah! and the guy he just falls right to the ground, right to the ground. A sun goes on the ground. Garbrandt's going like this, and then he's like down on the ground. He's down on the octagon. 
on the canvas. Crazy knockout. It's going to be a tough one to pick here. Thanks for that reenactment, Chris. And now finally, off to Brock for the award. The Knockout of the Year award goes to Joaquin Buckley for his knockout over Impa Kasagani during the Marias Sanhagen fight night. Thank you, Brock, and congratulations to Joaquin Buckley. It's a knockout that'll live on highlight reels for many years to come. And next up, in an historic year, there was many historic moments, but we whittled it down to three. So this is the award for the most historic MMA moment of 2020. Now our nominees are, first off, at UFC 249, Sam Alvey, Smiling Sam's first walk to the cage, ending the sports coronavirus apocalypse. Next, we have Nunez versus Spencer at a historic UFC 250. UFC 250 does get more historic event than that. This was the main event, incredible fight, and one that we'll look back as a historic moment. Finally, we have Khabib versus Gaethje, where the historic moment at the very end, Khabib re retired, shocking everybody, and it's something that we're going to be talking about for many years to come. Now, presenting this award, we got a friend of the program. It's Noah. The winner of the 2020 Most Historic MMA Moment is Sam Alvey for his COVID sports shutdown ending walk to the cage at UFC 249. Thank you to Noah. And congratulations to Sam Alvey, friend of the program, for winning the award Most Historic Moment of 2020 in the MMA world. Next, we have a big award, Breakout Female Fighter of the Year. Who are our nominees, Brad? The first nominee is Juliana Velasquez, the new Bellator flyweight champ, taking the mantle from Elimelay McFarlane. Next up, Amanda Hebas, who put herself on the map with a 2-0 record this year. And last, Lauren Murphy, who broke out with a 3-0 record in this year. And for this award, we have Dennis Bermudez here to announce it with us, a current UFC fighter. How you guys doing? I'm Dennis Bermudez. And for the, sorry I couldn't be there because of COVID, you know, so we're going virtual. So for the big game talk show podcast, the winner of the 2020 Breakout Female Fighter of the Year is Lauren Murphy. Congratulations, Lauren. You're super tough. You're a good fighter. You've been through some adversity. You're doing the good thing. Good luck on your next fight. Peace. Thank you, Dennis, and congratulations to Lauren Murphy on an excellent 2020 year, and we're looking forward to seeing what you can do in 2021. And now onto the male version of this award. It's the Male Breakout Fighter of the Year Award. So Chris, who are the nominees? First off, we got Kevin Holland, who went 5-0, and breaking onto the scene, going nuts this, this year. Next, we got Chaos Williams, Hit sitting at a two and one record and just those wins he did in spectacular fashion. This guy's this guy's crazy out there in the octagon. Finally, we have Kamzat Chemayev, the guy who took the UFC and MMA world by storm, going three and zero. Oh. It could have been four and zero. Oh, that some fights didn't work out. You know, this guy just is crazy in the octagon. And now to present this award, we have UFC strawweight Emily Whitmire. Hey everyone, I would like to announce the 2020 Male Breakout Fighter of the Year, Kevin Holland. Congratulations on your awesome 2020 year. I should say the last six months of 2020, which makes what you did even more incredible. I want to wish you the best of luck on your March 20th bout against Brunson. <coughs> COVID. Thank you, Emily. Congratulations to Kevin Holland. I mean, this guy has been so much fun to watch in the Octagon in 2020. We can't wait to see what this guy's full career has in store for us. I mean, 2021, big things are happen happening in the world of Kevin Holland. I mean, great fighter. Now, the next award we have is one that is near and dear to our hearts. It's an honor to bestow this award. It is the Canadian Fighter of the Year. Now, Brad, who are these nominees? Yeah, there's a lot of national pride that we have as Canadians watching these fighters fight. And for this award, the nominees are first off, Akeem Dawadu, UFC featherweight. Next up, Tanner Boser, UFC heavyweight. And last, Felicia Spencer, UFC featherweight, who challenged for the title this year. And to announce this award, we have Ashley Westbrook to announce it. So Ashley, who's the winner? And the winner of the 2020 Canadian Fighter of the Year Award goes to Felicia Spencer. 
Thank you, Ashley, for presenting that award and congratulations to Felicia Spencer. We couldn't be more proud of you and to accept this award, we have, let's bring to the stage, Felicia Spencer. Uh, thank you guys so much for even considering me to be the Canadian Fighter of the Year for your show. Um, it's definitely an honor to be even considered among all the great fighters that are from Canada. Um, my Canadian fans are near and dear to my heart, as always. Um, you know, I really appreciate the support that I've been getting from the beginning of my UFC career. So um, just huge thanks to everyone involved and everyone that is uh, a fan of the sport and a fan of me. And ho hopefully you guys will see me in 2021 soon and uh, have another great year ahead of us. So happy holidays and happy new year. Thanks, Felicia, for that. And once again, we're so proud of you as Canadians to watch you fight. Next up, we have a category, the biggest free agent signing of 2020 across MMA promotions. So, Chris, who are the nominees for this? Now, we got a, an eclectic mix of nominees from different, going into different organizations, from different organizations, so it's exciting. So, we got, first off, Michael Chandler coming into the UFC. It's a huge thing for the lightweight division, which is already stacked. Then we got Paige Van Zandt going to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. This girl is getting wild with the career and Bare Knuckle Fighting. This is a big ac acquisition for them. Finally, we got the late end of the year news. We got Yoel Romero going to Bellator. This is huge news in the MMA world and lots of great fights to make in Bellator. Now, let's see who was the best free agent signing. To present this is sports expert Mike. The winner of the biggest MMA free agent signing of the year is Yoel Romero of Bellator. Thanks, Mike, and congratulations to Yoel Romero on moving on to Bellator. It's going to be big for the organization. And like we mentioned off the top, this is all presented by 11th Island. So we got to sneak an ad in here. Yeah, what do you think? This was a free lunch? Now watch our advertisement. Welcome to the 11th Island. Think you can't travel because of COVID-19? Think again, because pandemic or not, you're always welcome here on the sandy beaches of the 11th Island. Here are some of the things you'll experience at 11th-island.com. Swim over to our Island Reads. New blogs every day. Catch up on all your sports news with Chris and I over at Big Game Talk on YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. Join me and Mike as we learn about bugs. Roberto! We have plenty more to offer and new stuff coming all the time, so make sure to check out our website for all the details. Start your vacation today by typing in 11th-island.com. That's 11th-island.com. See you there, castaways. Welcome back to the show. I'm sure you just went and subscribed to our page and joined our mailing list on the website for 11th Island. But regardless, now we have one of the negative awards of the night. We have the most disappointing fight of 2020. So Chris, who's the nominees for this? Now, we only have one nominee because there's only one answer to what the most disappointing fight of the year is. You already know it. We already know it. It's Adesanya versus Romero. That was a dance-off and not a good dance-off at all. I'm talking these moves and I'm talking this move. Not much of a move at all. Now, presenting this esteemed award, it is our dear producer at Big Game Talk. Here it is, Mitch. Winner for the most disappointing and possibly worst fight of the year goes to Israel Adesanya versus Yoel Romero at UFC 248. Thanks, producer Mitch, for presenting that award. I guess you're finally earning your pay around here. Next, we got the flip side of that last award category. We got the best fight of 2020. Who are the nominees, Brad? This was tough to pick. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of great fights in 2020, but I'm sure we can all agree on what the top three were. So the nominees are Joanna Jerjacek versus Wei Li Zhang at UFC 248. Then Dan Hooker versus Dustin Poirier, UFC Fight Night, June 27th. And then the most recent fight, Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno at UFC 256. And we're happy to have the Canadian Fighter of the Year Award winner, Felicia Spencer, here to announce this award for us. And the award for the best fight of 2020 goes to 
Yoana Janjacek and Wiley Zhang. Congratulations to the strawweights in the UFC. It was an epic battle at the very beginning of 2020 and a fight that we still are talking about in December, so you know it was a good one. Uh, it was. If you haven't seen it, be sure to go back and watch it. I don't think you can even count the number of strikes that were thrown by both ladies in that fight. So congratulations. Um, hope to see another great uh, strawweight title fight next year. And... Um, Congratulations again to both ladies. Thanks, Felicia. And congratulations to Joanna and Whaley for the great fight they had at UFC 248. It'll be among many fans' top fights of all time, not just 2020. And next up, we have the MMA retirement that occurred in 2020 that's least likely to last. So, Chris, who are the nominees and who is likely to come back? Now, first off, we have Henry Cejudo. I don't know about that retirement. Then we got Khabib Nurmagomedov, one of the biggest names in UFC. You know, all these guys are big names. So if you're a big name, you're going to come back, you know. Daniel Cormier is our final and third nominee. Now, presenting the winner by unanimous decision, it is Roberto. The winner of the 2020 MMA retirement least likely to last is Henry Cujudo. Thanks, Roberto, for presenting that award. Now, go get to work on some blogs. 11th Island needs you. Now, next up. We have the best Bellator card of the year. We got to give some love to Scott Coker up in here. Yeah. So the nominees for this are Bellator 248 slash Euro Series 10 in France, headlined by Czech Congo versus Timothy Johnson. And then we have Bellator 252, headlined by Patricio Pitbull versus Pedro Carvalho. And then last, Bellator 250, where we had Gegard Mousasi versus Douglas Lima for the middleweight championship. And to present this award, we have former professional esports player Jaitis, or otherwise known as Seth. Take it away. And the winner for the best Bellator event goes to Bellator 252, Pitbull vs. Carvalho. Thanks again for another great year of MMA, Bellator. Thank you to Seth for presenting that award, and congratulations to Bellator 252. Bellator's got to get some love here. They're a great organization and put on some great cards during the year, and Bellator 252 stands up as one of the best MMA cards of the year, not just for Bellator. And now, as any award show must have, we have our In Memoriam section. To avoid any copyright, so we have Chris here to sing his lovely rendition of I Will Remember You. All right, here we go. Time for my close up. Move, move on. Get it. You, you're blocking my face. Okay, perfect. All right, ready? I will remember you. Hey, no laughing. This is in memoriam, okay? This is serious. <laughs> will you remember me? Don't let your life pass you by. Weep not for the memories. Oh, this is too good. We're going to get copyrighted still. <laughs> I'm so tired, I can't sleep. Next up, we have the award for the best UFC fight night of 2020. The pay-per-views are great, but so are the fight nights, and the UFC put on a whole lot of them this year, so we got to give them some love. So, Chris, who are the nominees? First off, we got June 27th fight night, Poirier versus Hooker. Then we got September 19th fight night. Covington versus Woodley. And finally, last but not least, we got July 26th contribution to the Fight Night Archive. Whitaker versus Till. These are all some great events. It's going to be tough to pick, or it was tough to pick for us. Now to announce the winner, we got friend, special friend of the program, such a special friend that she's Brad's mom, in fact. Kelly, who won this award? The winner of the best UFC fight night card for 2020 is Covington versus Woodley on September the 19th. Thanks, Kelly, for presenting that award. It was an honor to have you part of tonight's ceremonies. Now, next up, we got the natural conclusion to the last award. We got the best UFC pay-per-view of the year. Brad, who are our nominees? A lot of great pay-per-views this year, but we picked three to choose from. So first off, we have UFC 256, headlined by Davidson Figueredo and Brandon Moreno. Next, UFC 251, headlined by Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal. And lastly, UFC 252, the trilogy fight, Daniel Cormier versus Stipe Miocic. We have Atikin here to give us the winner. So Atikin, what is it? Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the best pay-per-view of 2020 goes to... UFC 251, Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal. 
I gotta say, I'm not surprised with the winners of this one, especially for the hype that was leading up to this event, as well as the five rounds that it did go. Congratulations. Thanks, Adekin, and congrats to the UFC for all the great events they had in 2020. UFC 251 just stood a little bit above the rest, in our opinion. Now on to one of our most prestigious awards, the Female Fighter of the Year for 2020. This goes to honor the best female fighter of the year. Now, Chris, who are the nominees? First off, we got Bellator's Chris Cyborg, who went 2-0 this year and ended up winning the Featherweight Bellator Championship belt. Now, that's huge. This is a re-emergence re for a renaissance for Chris Cyborg here in, in Bellator. Next up, we got Mackenzie Dern who went 3-0 in the UFC. Great fighter she just fought recently. Looks great out there. And finally, we have Lauren Murphy, who also went 3-0. Now, one of our Breakout Fighter of the Year nominees, Lauren is just all over the place in our nominations this year. Now, to announce the winner, we have one of the biggest MMA fans you could meet. I'm, she knows everything about this stuff. Now, presenting, Emma. And the winner of the 2020 Female Fighter of the Year Award goes to Chris Cyborg. Special thank you to Emma. You know, it's such an honor and privilege to have such a brilliant MMA mind to come and present that award. And congratulations, Chris Cyborg. We're so excited to see what 2021 can bring. And to Mackenzie German and Lauren Murphy, I mean, you're in good company. And uh, we can't wait to see what who our award winner is next year. Um, because these three girls, they're all going to be vying for it. And who knows who's going to sneak in there uh, in 2021. Now, for our final award, it's the Male Fighter of the Year. Uh, we, we got some great nominees here. Brad, who are they? So first off, we have Davison Figueredo, who during the year became the flyweight champion and had two title defenses in the year 4-0. Next up, we have Kevin Allen, a breakout Male Fighter of the Year, who, as we previously mentioned, went 5-0 in 2020. And last, we have Charles Oliveira, who really put his name on the map with a 2-0 campaign that has him at the top of the lightweight rankings. And we're pleased to have UFC Hall of Famer Stefan Bonner here to announce the winner of this award. What's up, American Psycho Stefan Bonner here. Uh, this is for Bradley L doing a virtual MMA awards show. And I want to announce that 2020 Male fight Fighter of the Year is Davison. Figure eight oh. And hey man, he's a champ at 125. You just saw him fight um Morena to that draw. He had just fought three weeks before that. Hey bro, just a little advice. If you need the if you're the champ, you don't need to be taking fights three weeks apart. Alright? But man, mad respect for that. It takes a lot of uh, heart. Peace. Thanks, Stefan, for coming on to announce this award. And congratulations to Davis and Figueredo and all the winners of all the Big Game Talk Awards tonight. We're happy to be able to share this with you, our viewers, and the award winners. Now, this is not possible, this year of Big Game Talk, this year of MMA, without you, the viewers, and the people that are watching this stuff and, and having a good time and just making our days. Every time you leave a little comment or you leave a little like or you even just drop in and leave a view. You know, it's just been so special to be able to do this. All our, our followers on Instagram, this has been an incredible year. So we just want to thank too, all of the incredible athletes we had the privilege of talking to over the course of this year. We got, uh, we got David Pindell, we got Landon Barnes, we got Scott Holtzman, we got Sam Alvey, we, we got Eric Anders, we got uh, Andre Ewell, we got just so many, John Fitch, we got so many just, we've been blessed with all these great chances to talk to athletes. You guys have been so gracious and, and we want to thank you so much. Yeah, it's not possible without you guys and we're excited to still be here. We hope you check us out at our YouTube channel and wherever you find your podcast, look for Big Game Talk and we have some big things coming up in the new year with 11th Island. So we're excited and we hope you stick with us and we already can't wait till next year for the second annual Big Game Talk Awards. Okay, oh, yeah, and ready? And then, and who won? Lauren Murphy? Kevin Hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, it is our honor and privilege to have Felicia join us to give us a speech. Let's get gnarly with this. 
Yo, you want to make sure it recorded properly? Yeah.